Everybody, what's good? We got a huge episode right now. This is Trapanomics, male probability, analyzing your W's and L's, your wins and loss, and breaking it down to a mathematical formula. What are the chances of your pack getting seized, losing it, seizure, all that fucking crazy stuff that could happen with your pack, mailman running off, somebody stealing it, whatever the scenario is, we analyze it to the core, we break it down, and we give you a mathematical formula when you're sending packs out of LA. What are the chances of your packs touching down? That being said, it breaks down into about four different courier services. You got USPS, United States Postal Dope Service. Uh, I'm just kidding, United States Postal Service. You got FedEx, you got UPS, you got DHL, and you got other courier services that could possibly assist you. But right now, we're talking about the big three, USPS, FedEx, and UPS. That being said, let's go into the episode right here. Boom. Everybody's asking me, what do you mean by male loss probability? Like, what are the factors that equivalent into this formula? Well, let's go into that right now. This document outlines a formula-based risk model to estimate the probability of loss for male packages considered suspicious. That can be any type of loss. It accounts for return addresses, profiling, content type, uh, t high THCA, and the touch point during transit, how many times the pack is getting touched during transit. We broke this down into a formula that I have based my expertise on and other experts. I'm talking people that have shipped over 10,000 to 20,000 packs in their life, which is insane. People that run real mail logistics. Uh, I'd like to get some THCA experts on a part two of this, and the THCA experts can kind of break it down and give us their formula and what issues and roadblocks they ran into shipping THCA. That being said, the first thing is the initial handler loss. We're looking at a 0.20% for that. Initial handler is basically getting to the initial facility. So if you're giving it to the first person that's receiving the pack at the drop-off post office is the initial handler. So them putting it in a cart, them handing it back to somebody else, being stored at the initial facility, we're going with a 0.20% loss. Uh, I just go with that being said, it's more of a profiling thing. If you come in there smelling like Bud, wearing a weed t-shirt, if there's a stoner that is a postal employee, UPS, FedEx employee, whatever it is, we are going to do an episode that correlates USPS, UPS, FedEx, and we basically break down a mathematical formula between all three of those, and we give you your best odds when shipping from a courier, whatever service you pick out of here, uh, LA, whatever service you pick from LA. Transport facility loss is going to be number two. Uh, basically, that it's going to get moved to a transport facility, and it's in transportation. So the, the courier that picks it up from the initial drop-off location, bringing to the the distribution facility before it gets sent out. That's going to be the transport facility loss. We're looking at 0.75% with that. Why it is high, higher is because they get to basically move a little bit more discreet on when they're moving it, and I bet you they have a little bit more sauce of when it actually gets to the transit facility. That could incorporate with the transit facility working with the transport company that brought it to the trans trans transit facility. So they could be in cahoots together and they could be tipping them off these boxes. Like, yo, this box, we already know. It's like, let, let's let it go through every four weeks and then boom, let's snatch it every five weeks, maybe boom. And so they have a formula too so they don't alarm the person sending the pack and the person sending the pack is able to uh, take their L's a little bit more seldomly and equivalent their L's on a better level because the postal people aren't just stealing every one of them. They're like, yo, we're going to steal one every four weeks. This exact box, this guy is sending. And then from there, we'll have better chances of us having more long-term uh, theft, theft pack ratio within the person dropping off the actual packs. So that transfer, transfer, transit facility loss is 1.50. Uh, that could be the LAX facility, that could be Van Nuys, it could be whatever facility that's going to the airport. I, from there, it, it's a lot of seizures, it's a lot of uh, postal inspectors, it's a lot of dogs, it's a lot of profiling, they're poking the boxes, anything funny, anything too heavy, anything that doesn't weigh right, 
anything that looks odd, they're going to go through that shit if it, if it does have suspicion. Plane truck handling loss, that's basically it going on in the plane, transport to the plane. Uh, leaving the plane would be also at arrival destination city. So 0.25% would basically be it arriving at the destination city, and then the destination city, the person handling the box there uh, steals it, which is very common. Some people might think this is a little bit higher of a percentage. We'll let you guys decide in the comments. Then again, it is based on my expertise knowledge. Uh, the transfer facility loss is the next vertical. That being said, if the pack is from California, we're looking at a 1.50% increase. And this is where a lot of stuff goes funny. So basically touching down in a city, let's say it touches down in Nebraska. It's, it's at that facility, and then it's getting from the touchdown facility, it's getting moved to another facility, or it's going straight to the postal handler from there and going out to the designated address. If it transfers to another facility, we're going to increase that 0.50% because it's basically another point of touch and another mail courier handling that. So another person handling the box, which could they could see that CA address, and it could be like, yo, let me snatch this shit. Or they could have like somebody in their ear, yo, any Cali addresses you see, snatch that shit. Uh, local post office transfer, that's it going from one post office to the next. This is probably the highest risk right here because to me it's the, l the least amount of surveillance for the actual internal employee. Once it gets to their facility, they know how to work the cameras, they know how to work the angles, and they know how to read the packages, and it gives them time. And then the manager and the employees could all be a cahoots together, and they could be like doing it on an increment level so it's not hot and they know how to do them right. It's like, yo, if you guys are missing your box or you guys get to call them up and be like, yo, you guys stole my box, or they might even send you a letter like, oh, here, you can go check in, go, go to the post office, go pick it up. First of all, never go pick it up. We'll do another episode about that. That's rule number one, never do anything. <laughs> never have anybody sign for anything either. It's always drop off at the front door. If they ever want you to sign for some shit, don't even open the door. Uh, mailman theft is 0.50%. That's pretty much the, the end, the end mail person finding the box and not actually distributing it to you, not actually delivering it to you, not distributing it, delivering it to you. So I look at that as 0.50%. You guys will have different uh, consideration on that. Basically, if you've been through that, where the packs made it all the way to the end mailman and that the last person, the last mailman, didn't deliver the box to the actual the end delivery person, whoever it was supposed to go to. General transit loss, we're also going to put another 0.25%. That's if you're basically going uh, on standard shipping and it's going from truck to truck to truck to truck. That some people have more, uh, I guess some people have better luck with going standard over two day. We'll break that down in another probability. A video, so we're going to have another probability, which is basically going to break down overnight, two-day, and standard, and breaking down a probability formula between each of those and giving you guys more insight on that. Uh, modifiers are also California return address, 1.50 percentage. Uh, that goes from whatever transfer facility it's going to, 0.25% profiling, uh, how you look, uh, your name on the box, um, Basically, what city the box is going to, too, is also a profiling aspect. Going into any major metropolitan city coming from California is also going to give it a red light alert. Like, yo, L.A. to Atlanta, it's dope in the mail, no shit. L.A. to Chicago, it's dope in the mail, no shit. High THC and concealed. Uh, we're going to go with a negative 1.0 1. 1. percentage loss probability because uh, there's so much THC in the, a in the mail, we can actually decrease our probability uh do, do, we actually we can increase our probability increase our probability of it touching down because of that so this is the loss probability formula uh is going to be on the bottom i'm going to show you guys real quick boom 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 this is it boom p underscore loss equals 0 0.2 plus 0 0.75 this is the actual formula on the bottom if you guys see it we have our calculator up here which is negative CA equals one if the package is from California. Everywhere else is zero. Uh, probably Oklahoma and Colorado would be a one, two. Uh, I'll get your guys' input on that. THCA, one higher if it was well concealed. Example, example calculations right there too. You guys can look at the calculations and let's go to the next sheet. Boom, we broke this all down into very, very simplistic way to look at it. It's 
a pie chart, and the pie chart has all the probabilities of what could happen. The pie chart also shows uh, the percentages of what could happen. That being said, I want to get you guys' opinions and what you guys have been through and give me your insight and input and give me your criticism on what you guys think of this formula and what are the chances of a pack actually getting to your designated address, you know, and basically how much you're sending to also has a liability of what volume of weight you're sending. Is it over five pounds? Is it under 10 pounds? Boom. That also gives a level of probability incubated within the formula. Like this, this is our male risk loss probability formula. And this breaks down all, all the probabilities of losing a pack in the male. What could possibly happen? And we broke it down to a, a calculation, a scientific formula. And I really appreciate your guys' support. And like I said, we have two more episodes.